Welcome to Platform Media International Sports. My name is Joe Ehizode. Uh, tonight, we are looking at the African qualifier for the Nations Cup Championship in Cameroon, Feb January and February 2022. I uh, have in the studio tonight my very good friend, TC from Canada. TC, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for having me, Joe. Yeah, um, over the weekend and perhaps in the next few days, precisely March 30 and 31st, we will know all the qualifiers to see. Um, yes. From the current situation, Group A, we already know the half-flying teams, Guinea and Mali. In Group B, you have Burkina Faso, Uganda and Malawi contending for the two spots in Group B. Group C, we have Ghana and South Africa and Sudan, possibly. One with not going to Cameroon. And in Group D, we have Gabon, Gambia, already qualified. In Group C, we have Morocco half-flying, and the next spot will be uh, between Mauritania and Burundi. In Group F, we have Cameroon and Kved. Cameroon is hosting. And Group G, we have um egypt and comoros could you imagine this comoros is going to the nation's cup kenya well, and togo are not going <laughs> oh my goodness and in, no, group H, we... in group h we have algeria and zimbabwe already qualified group i we have senegal and congo perhaps guinea bissau might spring a surprise on the last day and then group j we have Tunisia and Equatorial Guinea already qualified. Group K, we have Cote d'Ivoire, and the two sports will be will be a battle between Ethiopia and Madagascar. And the last group, but not last but not the least group, Nigeria has qualified, and the next four spot will be Benin Republic and Sierra Leone. TC, it looks like a surprise. Comoros is going to the Nations Cup for the first time. Yeah, that, that, that's one of the surprises of this uh, qualifying series uh, for this uh, edition of the Nations Cup. Uh, it's a nation that has never been there before. And uh, should, should they get uh, uh, the ticket, it will, it, will, it will be a big celebration for them in that country to have qualified. Wow. Uh, uh, is that a positive for African boost football or not? Uh, I, I won't say it's a positive thing for us because um, ordinarily there are traditional nations of countries that we all know that are so consistent in being in the championship. But then for Camoros, it, it's a it's a it's a big boost for their football. But I won't generalize to say it's a big uh, goal for African football. Okay, let's narrow it down. Nigeria. It's in Nations Cup. You see, in our generation, we we had when Nigeria was beating Republic 7-0 in the days of Chairman Christian Chuku in the 80s. But yeah. now, well, Nigeria beat them 1-0 at home, but it was uh, a kind of uh, the struggle to the finishing line, correct? Yes, it is. It is a struggle for Nigeria. And um, like you rightly said, that group is so very open, apart from Nigeria being um, the top uh, country in that group, uh, Syria alone might still be there in Yaoundé in January, because all the, all the, the last game between Syria alone and Benin Republic will determine who goes with Nigeria from that group. And Syria alone might be playing at home, right? Correct? Yes. yes, yeah, because when they beat them in, uh, in, Port, in, Novo. in Port Novo, yeah, Port Novo in the first leg 1 0. And um, if they repeat that feat and they, they, they get a win in Freetown, then um, they could be heading for the Nations Cup. Remember, Cameroon came to Benin and they were uh, four goals down, they came back and surprised the Super yeah. Eagles. And yeah. even the Super Eagles could not beat them in, uh, in uh, Freetown, yeah. Yeah, that you mean, yeah, Syria no, right? So, yes. but then they will be hosting this time and um, the crop of the Beninois, uh crop of new players, uh, majority of them came from the Academy of uh, 
they are most popular players. Cesiagbo, Cesiagbo, whatever his name is, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. we we expect a very good match come Tuesday in Freetown, and um, all all they need is um, just the one zero win, and uh, they will yeah, they will, uh, they will be because, Cameroon. Yeah, uh, they will be Cameroon. Well, because, poor, no. poor Republic of Benin. They they tried, but the Nigeria just uh, surprised them in the last minute, right? Yeah. But we scored our goal in the ninety third minute. The referee was already checking his watch. When that uh, corner kick came, and uh, it was a very good header from the new boy, and um, we picked the three points. Was that a true test of character for the Super Eagles in the match against? Did you? Did it, was it a true test for the Super Eagles going? I, I would say it's a true test com comparing the, the the prowess of Nigerian in world football or African football as uh, we are discussing now. Beating Republic of Benin one zero in uh, Port Novo is not um, is not a test of our prowess because this is a country we have beaten seven zero before in the past, and um, again eighty five percent of the players playing for that country are from the western part of Nigeria. Oh, <laughs> it just it just it just opened up a, a, a cupboard of, full of skeletons uh, to see. Well, let's not go there. <laughs> now let's let's talk about um, what do you think is the problem of Nigeria? We have a very a, a, hand, a crop of stars playing for playing uh, in elite league in Europe, but no, um, we play Sierra yeah. Leone. We couldn't we couldn't score in free time. We're back here. We managed to score just one goal in the last minute, and we have good, good strikers. What is their problem? Joe, you agree with me that uh, the, the, the kind of dexterity we exhibited in the 90s is not the same as what we have now. Uh, right, right from the time when uh, the crop of uh, players in the under-17 tutored by Fanny Amu won in Japan, there was a great ascendance of Nigerian players in Europe and world football. And the same thing goes for most African countries like Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, and the rest of them. But now if you, if you, if you look at the leaguers all over the world, uh, how many African players are really making it like the days of um, Etofi, George Open, where Akago Wako, JJ Okocha, we, we don't have those players in the bigger league now in Europe that you can really say, yes, African football is dominant. Now, we were so domineering in the 90s in every league of the world, but it's not the same now. You can, on your fingers, count how many players in Africa are really playing for top clubs in, a, in the English Premiership, in, in the Italian Liga or the Spanish Liga. Uh, Italian Serie A, sorry, or the Spanish Liga, but then it's it's not comparable to what we had in the 90s. Okay, you're talking about the Asai world, but again, we were, we were playing against African opposition, so yeah. we couldn't even score, we couldn't score a very, let me say, an exciting goal. I mean, throughout my, for 90 minutes. They, you remember the, the goal scored by Paul Onoachi was scored in 93rd minutes. Yes. So the Super Eagle couldn't score a goal against the Republic of Ben. Uh, uh, yeah, you see, not... uh, uh, before that game, the, the, the Benenuas also think they could make it to the Nations Cup with that match, knowing that they will be going away in their last game. So the opposition was stiff, which was expected, because they also want to pick the three points in that particular game, knowing that picking that three points will have opened up the group, the group wider, because Nigeria will have ended up with eight points, while they will have ended up with seven points. And uh, the, the group will just have been a, a touch notch for the last... Uh, the last season. match? Yeah. Okay. L look at how the system we play. Is it the system that is not encouraging scoring, or our players are not dedicated? What's, what's, do, a, do a prognosis. Yeah, well, 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 if you look at that game very well, we were, we were not playing the traditional Nigerian football or the type of system we were used to. We were not using the wing. The coach wanted to play from the midfield. And there was also a depletion in his midfield in the 
Alex Iwobi tested positive for COVID hours before the match. So that disrupted the, the team selection and uh, adjustment had to be made because he couldn't play the game. So he, he doesn't have the full complement of the kind of midfield he wanted to play. So he had to resolve to changing his tactics and coming in from the left side of, 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 of the attacking system where you have um, his old captain, uh, the team's captain. Um, no, um, he was a defender that captain was in that match. Yeah, and, it's what yeah. Trust Kong. Yeah. It, so it, they were it, going through it, did he, and uh, perhaps... Yeah. Uh, it, 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 again, he was too conscious of the fact that he had to play his style that he played in Leicester, which is playing as a defensive midfielder. Again, he wanted Nigeria to score. He was looking for the passes that could split the Bedenoas, but then it was the opposition that was really having their way because they wanted the three points so that they could secure a very comfortable position for the last day match. You see, the years that we, Nigeria dominated African football, we had a ball carrier. Uh, in in American football, you call them uh, the uh, the uh, um, what do you call uh, the man who controls uh, you, you control the, the the pace of the game, right? Um, look at it. In the uh, in the eighties, we have someone like Mudashiru Lawa. Um, in the early eighties, we had someone like Henry Mosu or. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, Friday Ekpo. And then and you... God, you were Then emerged, emerged somebody like uh, uh, Mr. Okocha, Austin Okocha, J.J. Okocha. Now, since the exit of J.J. Okocha, uh, Mikel came in, like, holding the mid, holding the ball and dictated the pace of the game. Right now, we don't have somebody who can say, okay, we, we, where is he? Let's find him so that he will create chances for the attackers. Yesterday, I was so mad, I was so disappointed and even fed up with the long trust, the captain, Trust Kong was making to the front. I, I agree that you have somebody like uh, Vitor Simen doing that, but um, you should not be playing those kind of, in those days we call that police football, but he was doing that consistently. Uh, perhaps he noticed there was no ball carrier in the team. So when do we get that? You see, that is the problem we've had over the years. Like you rightly said, um, after the exit of JJ Okocha, we have been finding it difficult to, to find the ball holder, somebody that can hold the ball in the midfield and in a split of a second, spray a pass that could split the opposition. The but again, the likes of... Um, Alex Iwobi and Didi are not attacking midfielders in the right sense of the word. In Didi's kind of defensive. football has, has been changed into a defensive approach. Yeah. Just like we did to Mikel Obi. When Mikel played in the under 20, he was an attacking midfielder. Yes. But then his game was changed and he became a defensive midfielder, which confused. And I would say kill his game and um, could not let the guy blossom to the level. It is. Messi is still playing. And yeah. they, they both played in the under 20 in Holland in 2005. Yes. So, but then he, he, he fell into the hands of coaches that twisted his game around and he became a defensive midfielder. The same thing is happening to Indigi now. Like I was telling somebody a few days ago, Except in the start playing his normal or traditional style of football as an attacking midfielder, he will not get the kind of club that will buy, that will want him so that he could flourish. So is it, TC, I have noticed a pattern. Why do European coaches always have African footballers to to blossom, uh, perhaps in a defensive manner. Look at Everton. Um, the coach is using Alex Wobi as a flying wing, a flying, a flying number two. Uh, he and until the boy complained. Yeah. Mikel Mikel Obi was was his uh, 
his football, his creative uh, talent was destroyed by Moreno by changing yeah. from attacking midfielder to be uh, to be the hard working, the defensive midfielder. Indeed, it's the same thing now. He's also uh, in Leicester City. He's doing that. So why is it is it is it the, the fact that European coaches see Africans as people who should who have the strength to to do the, the, the bad job on the midfield or in the defense. Why are they doing that? Joe, you are, I, I think you are right in that sense because uh, most of these coaches see the potency and strength in African players and uh, they, they, they have the energy to, to stay up and down, to move up and down the field and uh, fall back as quick as possible when the team is defending. So this is the reason why most of them are turning African players around with that kind of a role. And uh, it's not helping their game in most cases because... Yeah, Victor, players, Victor Moses too was done that. Yeah, uh, some of these players are so creative and goal hunting footballers that uh, playing a different role most times confuse them and uh, turn their game uh, around and they start uh, drinking. Okay. Let's, uh, let's let's talk something important. I'm sure you watched yesterday's match about Super Eagles versus the Republic of uh, um, uh, Benin. They, uh, one player made a cameo appearance. His name is Harry. Harry uh, what's uh, his name is Iwala. I can't remember his first name. Uh, TC. Uh, despite the few minutes he's, he played, I noticed. The boy has, is an abundance of talents. And I, I asked some of our colleagues back home, I'm told that the boy is a local player. Did you see that? Yes. Um, I, I think somebody like that should be given more opportunities in the team. Yes. He, he, was, he was so creative and uh, very... very so yeah, he was running at defenders. Yes. He was, something, he was, something that uh, this boy did not do. They would play for Galastarai. Uh, what's yeah. his name? Uh, Henry Onyekuru. Onyekuru was too cautious, but when he came, he was running at the defenders for the past, for the few minutes he played. I'm like, okay, who is this guy? And I asked, and he said, they said he plays for Enyimba Football Club of Aba. Yeah, that that boy will go places, and I think uh, giving him more opportunity to play in the team and. Uh, eventually making it to the Nations Cup if uh, the coach wants to blend his team and take some of the home base players. I think Iwala would be one of the very good choices for him to take. And uh, that would uh, expose the boy to international football. So he's, that boy is full of talent. He's somebody that should be encouraged and he's somebody that will go places. But I want the, a, a little bit of caution here. The boy is stocky. Okay. They should stop feeding who he padded yam and by yam because that will kill him. That will slow him down. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, part of the reason that I that has I also have deduced about our under 17 where blow something is the fact that when they come back from championship and they win something, they, they celebrate too much and they eat a lot and then yeah. they die. Uh, their talents die, not them. The, the talents in them die. So yeah. I I saw uh, the Iwala yesterday. The first thing I told one of my colleagues is that somebody should get, uh, should give him the necessary guidance and feed him with the right food because he's already looking stocky. And the more he eats starchy or carbohydrate food, he's going to get fat and he's going to get. Yeah, I, think, um, I don't know whether the club has a nutritionist that uh, monitor or manage the diet of the players, but then that's a very essential thing for any basketball club to also be watchful of. No, this is where managers come in. Somebody should volunteer to be his manager and begin to feed him the right food. Uh, they by me, Mr. De uh, Shegun De me did that to Choma and Jomo. You remember that? Yeah. yeah. Right? And he won gold. 1996 and Olympic. Yeah, when uh, Shegun De me was doing that to Choma, nobody knew what, what was doing. People thought he was going to use him make money, but they didn't know yeah. he was programming her for... for for success, but somebody should do that to Iwala. If you really want to invest in that boy, that should be the, what he should do, right? Yeah, I want to believe that uh, Iwala himself and the club, and uh, as well as uh, the Super Eagles managers, are listening to this and uh, 
they should watch the kind of food uh, the boy is eating now because if uh, he continues to eat starchy food, like Riley said, he, he, he could uh, lose control of his uh, muscle control or yeah. those that. That will affect his uh, extra pounds, uh, extra pounds, extra pounds, yeah. and talents go the uh, opposite direction, negative way. Yeah. What about goalkeeping? Uh, he wasn't tested, but uh, yesterday um, he was he was shaky. Uh, well, uh, is that I, the I best? Think, is that the best Nigeria could get? I, I don't. I don't think that's the best we have to get. I don't know. The plans of the goalkeeper trainer. Um, I, I think we have uh, one particular Nigerian player playing outside Nigeria now. That is, uh, I think, he's in Spain or somewhere. Um, I, I, it's a goalkeeper. I figure, yes, I'll figure that out. That is doing very well in the second division in Spain, and uh, we should give opportunities to just such people because that is one department that. Uh, the, the German coach has not successfully pinned down a talent for uh, since he came on board as uh, the Super Eagles manager. It reminds me when we talk about ball career, what about uh, Berichi, the guy who plays for Crystal Palace? Do you think uh, Nigeria should go for him? Oh, well, yes, that, that's another good player we should go for. I, I know we have, uh, we have uh, quite a number of Nigerians playing in the English lower division that are. Uh, Somebody also, somebody also mentioned one of these uh, playing for, uh, I think in Norwich City, they said it's a yes. very good ball card. Quite a number of them playing in the championship in England. And, uh, but then, uh, like we discussed last week, this is a matter that uh, we should uh, be very careful about because most of these players are, were not born in Nigeria. They were born and groomed in England and uh, Majority of them, are, I'm not sure, are not ready to to, to, to come and play for the Super Eagles. All right, Mr. T C, ever ever present and ever young. You, that's that's the way we go. That's the way we roll. And um, I think we're we're planning to go to Nations Cup in Cameroon. And um, things, all things being equal, we're going to be capturing the Nations Cup in Cameroon live for our viewers. This year, I can't thank you enough for coming to the studio tonight. Joe, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure being part of uh, the program. And uh, at any time, I'm always willing to be part of it. You bet. I'll see you again next week. Thank you very much. To our viewers around the globe, this is Platform Media International Sports. Uh, our guest, I want to thank you, Tunji Koka, and our producer, who has been whispering some of the name I forgot. I want to thank you for, for, for doing a good job. And all our fans around the globe, keep clicking on the subscription tab. We need you. We need um, as many of you to keep tuning on to our channels. I'm Joe Ehizode, saying have a good night rest and happy viewing. Good night.